Good morning to all of you in Dhaka. This is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome you to the training and capacity building initiative of the S9 component of the Urban Resilience Project Rajuk part, which is on building code implementation and enforcement. Uh, we, as part of the initiative, we started our training program on March the 23rd. Uh, we did three weeks of, of two seminars each uh, until the month of Ramadan started. Then we took a week's break. We, we are starting again. All the training so far has been general or structural. Uh, today we are we are starting on the non-structural part. Uh, the uh, seminar today will go from 10 to 12:15. Uh, I think the speaker may want a break or two in between. He will talk to you about that. Between 12.15 and 12.30, there will be a question and answer session. And if you have attended any of these seminars before, you know by now that to get continuing professional uh, CPD hours, you will have to access and, and write and successfully pass a quiz within the next within 24 hours after the seminar ends so those details have been provided to you uh, with instructions as to how to access the seminar so i don't have need to explain any of that uh, it is my pleasure now to introduce today's uh, speaker that's architect ziaul islam uh, Architect uh, Zia has a, a Bachelor's of Architecture and a Master of Architecture degree from BWET. He is Associate Professor of Architecture at the University of Asia Pacific. Uh, he is uh, active as an architect. He is also professionally quite active in, in uh, in uh, continuing education activities, uh, he was uh, involved in the update of what has now become the 2020 edition of BNBC. His topic today, as you see on the slide, is occupancy classification and types of construction classification. This is part three of BNBC. He will cover parts of chapters one, two, and three of part three uh, today. Uh, tomorrow, he will come back to talk about occupancy-based requirements, building height, and area limitations. That will also be part three of BNBC, parts of chapters two and three. So we, with that, uh, I would like to present to you Architect Zia, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. S.K. Ghosh. Um, uh, I am Zia Islam. As you already uh, know that I am an associate professor in the Department of Architecture, University of Asia Pacific. So our topic here uh, is occupancy classification and types of construction classification as uh, recommended in BNBC 2020. Uh, today is 20th April 2021 and this training is part of uh, the URP S09 training, uh, its module number is NS1. I thank uh, International Court Council, Rajuk, uh, SDE Limited, and the World Bank for arranging this webinar. Uh, so let's uh, look forward. Um, uh, so today's um, um, presentation is subdivided into three segments uh, uh, of different uh, timing. Segment one will be a bit shorter, so the early introductory segment it is. Uh, it is a, it will um, 
describe a general outline of occupancy classification and types of construction from BNBC part three, chapter one. Then we will go for a recess for five minutes uh, and we'll come back then with segment two, uh, which will be a bit longer, 60 minutes approximately. And uh, it will discuss about occupancy classification, a bit detailed discussion. Then again, we'll take a five minute recess and that will be the beginning of uh, segment three, uh, uh, approximately a 30 minute session, which uh, will cover types of construction classification, uh, a bit detailed discussion. So after that, uh, in the last 15 minutes, we'll have a question and answer session. As you already know that you can uh, write your question and answer at any moment. Uh, you can you can uh, uh, see a button at the uh, right button where there is a question answer tab. You can you can click on it and uh, put your question. So we will. Uh, uh, go through the question and answer session at the last end of this presentation. Uh, so what we will cover here uh, in this presentation today is uh, part of chapter one, two, and three of BNBC 2020, part three, actually. It's part three is three chapters uh, partially covered. So um, let us get to the topic. Uh, we are starting segment one here, um, uh, which is about a general outline on number one is occupancy classification and number two, types of construction classification. So let us get an idea about occupancy classification. Occupancy classification uh, of buildings is based on occupancy or nature of use how the occupants use the building. Uh, that is uh, the basis of the occupancy classification categorization. Um, it uh, deals with the general and specific requirements of each of the occupancy groups. And more detailed uh, information, uh, actually it has uh, a few chapters on it, but the initial brief description of the occupancy groups will be uh, found in BNBC part three, chapter one. Especially, uh, uh, it starts with section 1.4 where occupancy and construction classification of buildings uh, is a separate section. And there is a table 3.1.1, uh, which describes it clearly. So uh, what is types of construction classification? Actually, the fire resistance ratings of various types of construction for structural and non-structural members are the basis for types of construction classification. So uh, there are two classifications. One is occupancy based and one is types of construction based. So types of construction is determined by fire resistance rating of the structural and non-structural members. Uh, the detail uh, of fire um, uh, resistance, uh, the detail of construction classification will be found in the same chapter, uh, in the same section. Uh, however, there is a different table for that, table 3.1.2. Um, we'll go through these tables uh, so that we can have an idea about what these occupancies and construction classifications are. So we start with table 3.1.1. It is the summary of occupancy classification. Uh, as you can see, this is a uh, uh, table divided into four columns. Uh, the first column uh, is about occupancy type, then subdivision, then nature of use of or occupancy. And finally, uh, there is fire index. Uh, with an asterisk, of course. So we'll uh, we'll discuss about the asterisk later on at the end of this uh, chart or table. So uh, as you can see uh, in the occupancy type, uh, each occupancy has been assigned with an alphabet. Here, the residential occupancy is assigned with A. 
educational facilities with B and so on. We'll, we'll go uh, along the table and we'll see that it, it continues up to M. Uh, so there are different letters assigned for different occupancy type. And there is a subdivision where um, the letter uh, with a number has been uh, 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 used to represent uh, each subtype or subdivision. Uh, so here uh, in the residential category, A1 is for single family dwelling, A2 is for two family dwelling, A3 is for flats or apartment, A4 for mess, boarding house, dormitories and hostels, A5 is for hotels and lodging houses. In the educational facilities, there are three subdivisions or subcategories, B1, B2 and B3, B1 for educational facilities up to higher secondary levels, B2 is facilities for training and above higher secondary education, B3 is preschool facilities. As you can see, the fire index is a number. Uh, here, the fire index is one uh, for both the categories, both occupancy types. So the table continues. The C is uh, basically for institution of care, institution for care. It has five subcategories or subdivisions. C1 is for institution for care of children. C2 is custodial institution for physically capable adults. C3 is custodial institution for the incapable adults. C4 is penal and mental institutions for children. C5 is penal and mental institution for adults. Uh, they all have a fire index of one, uh, but D, E, and F have a different fire index. As you can see, this is two. Um, so D is for healthcare facilities. There are two types. One is D1, normal medical facilities. The other is D2, emergency medical facilities. E is for business. E1 is for office. E2, research and testing laboratories. E3, essential services. F is for mercantile. F1 is small shops and markets. F2, large shops and market. And F3 is for refueling station. Now, G is for industrial building. There are two categories, subcategories. G1 is low hazard industries. G2 is moderate hazard industries. You can, you can notice that the fire index has been increased uh, in this segment, G1 and G2 and H1 and H2, uh, the number is three. Uh, in the H category, storage buildings, H1 and H2, H1 is low fire risk storage, H2 is moderate fire risk storage. I is assembly, I1 is for large assembly with fixed seats, I2 is small assembly with fixed seats, I3, large assembly without fixed seats. I4, small assembly without fixed seats. And I5 is for sports facilities. They are of fire index one. So then comes the hazardous building, uh, J category. So uh, J1 is for explosion hazard building, J2, chemical hazard building, J3 biological hazard building, J4 radiation hazard building. They have the highest fire index number, that is four. So we are almost at the end of this occupancy classification uh, uh, table. Um, K is for garage, K1 is parking garage, K2 is for private garage, K3 is for repair garage. As you can see, the fire index uh, rating varies uh, between different garages. Uh, it's a bit unconventional uh, for a same occupancy type, uh, but uh, we'll get onto that later. L is for utility. Uh, M is miscellaneous. M1 is for structure, uh, special structures. M2 is for fences, tanks, and towers. So uh, here we can get an explanation of uh, this fire index. The fire index is an absolute number. Occupancy group having same fire index may be permitted as mixed occupancy and different, different fire index shall be separated 
or detached as per provision of this code. So we are getting three new terminologies uh, because uh, so far we were clear that there are uh, one particular alphabet assigned to each occupancy and it has subcategories. Uh, so that is clearly stated out that this occupancy is for residential or this is for educational, for uh, healthcare or something. But here we can find uh, three new terms. One is called mixed occupancy, the other is separated occupancy, and the other is detached occupancy. So let's have a look to those things, what is uh, meant by mixed, uh, separated, and detached occupancy. So mixed occupancy, uh, here at least we can see that uh, it is, there are multiple mixed occupancies, but the first one is about non-separated use. So there is a um, footnote of occupancy classification that the occupancies can be mixed uh, and uh, with certain guidelines, of course. So what are the guidelines? Uh, here is one. Uh, it says that the following occupancies shall not be required to designate as separate occupancy classification from users to which they are accessory to any occupancy group other than occupancy group J. As we can uh, see from the earlier chart that J is a hazardous occupancy. So uh, J uh, uh, will be uh, treated differently from the other occupancies as you can see through the uh, progression of this uh, presentation. But uh, for all other occupancies, uh, the following five categories uh, uh, will uh, not be required to designate as separate occupancy. They can be non-separated occupancies or non-separated use for the um, primary occupancy. So what are they? A is assembly rooms having a floor area not more than 75 square meter. B is the administrative and clerical offices and similar offices not exceeding 25% of the floor area of the major occupancy and not related to hazardous building as defined in occupancy J. C is administrative offices, gift shops, and other similar uses of occupancy A provided the uses do not exceed 10% of the floor area of the major occupancy. And D is kitchen associated with dining area. E is carports having at least two sides entirely open associated with occupancy A. So these are uh, mixed occupancies, non-separated use, of course. So they can be uh, considered as part of the main occupancy and uh, we don't need to take any special measure uh, to accommodate them. So uh, here comes the separated occupancy. Uh, and as you can see that separated occupancy also involves some construction measures. It's not only separated, it is also uh, the construction that is also very important here. So separated occupancies and construction. It says that when two or more occupancies are accommodated in a building, each such occupancy shall be separated according to the provisions specified in section 2.3, chapter 2, part 3, and table 3.2.1. So we'll go into details of these uh, tables and chapters uh, and sections uh, later on. Uh, but uh, so we can have an idea from this statement that there are uh, options for mixing two or more occupancies in the same building, uh, but it has a condition that there will be some separation uh, requirements uh, and uh, that is mentioned in the particular section and table of this part of BNVC. When two or more types of constructions used within a building, the entire building shall be subject to the most restrictive construction type and shall comply with FAR restrictions as per provision of this code. So uh, it is about construction, not about uh, occupancies. The second uh, para is about type of constructions. 
So if we mix two types of or multiple types of constructions together, uh, the most restrictive construction types shall be the uh, 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 shall dictate and dominate, and we have to comply with that. And the far corresponding to those type of construction will be uh, allotted to that uh, particular development. So this is the second part, but the third para says that, however, if the occupancies within the different type of constructions are completely separated by construction that meet the fire resistance rating requirement of fire separated separation list in table 3.2.1 of chapter one, part three, then each occupancy so separated may for the purpose of the code be considered as separate building sections. So in a case when the occupancies are different and the constructions of for each occupancy is different, construction type is different. So if they are separated according to table 3.2.1, they can be considered as separate building section. Uh, so uh, that is one kind of mixed occupancy uh, that can be done in the same building. Uh, uh, so separate, uh, 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 they can be considered as also the separate buildings if necessary. So restriction for mixed construction. Uh, in buildings of mixed construction, no structural element shall be supported by construction having a lower fire resistance rating than the required for the element being supported. So uh, it's quite clear that no uh, lower fire rated uh, construction will support a higher fire rated construction. So let's uh, look at this table 3.2.1, which is referred in the above uh, slide. Uh, what is it about? So it is about barrier walls and floors and ceiling assemblies uh, and their fire resistance rating requirement uh, because they will separ separate uh, uh, two occupancies or two type of constructions uh, from each other. So they are known as barrier walls or barrier floor and ceiling assemblies. Uh, and the fire resistance rating requirement is according to this chart, will be according to this chart. So uh, this chart has, uh, a, uh, you can, as you can see that there are uh, rows in the, uh, uh, in the top uh, side and uh, columns in the left side, one column, uh, having the same occupancy numbers, A1, A2, A3, up to M1 and M2. Here is also A1, A2, A3, up to M1 and M2. And in between them, uh, there are three options. One is a number, the other is NA or not applicable, and the other is NP or not permitted. So when you get an NP uh, in, a, uh, in a situation which corresponds to the, uh, 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 in the chart with other occupancies, you can, you can understand that this particular type of construction is not permitted. But when you get a number somewhere that it is three, say for example, for E3 and B2, so uh, it is permitted, but you will have a three hour separation for barrier walls and floors and ceiling assemblies. So this is the chart that uh, allow us to uh, make mixed occupancies uh, with separation. So this is a, a separated uh, uh, occupancies chart. So here is a detached occupancy, the last type of occupancy uh, mixture, where a building separated by distance in the same plot to accommodate different type of occupancies shall be determined as detached occupancy. So here uh, we are separating by distance. We are not separating by 
uh, material uh, or fire resistance requirement uh, of material uh, or construction materials. Uh, we are just separating different building blocks uh, through uh, distance and uh, that will ensure the fire safety. But it can be done within the same plot uh, as it happens in many complex uh, complexes or campuses. So how will it be done? Uh, actually, the separation distance is determined uh, on the basis of two um, criteria. One is uh, on the basis of difference of occupancies, and the other is on the basis of different in height. As you know, for uh, tall buildings, we have a separate uh, separation rule and um, or setback rules, um, but for uh, occupancies, we also have separate setback and separation rules. So if it happens uh, that uh, two buildings uh, side by side within the same plot uh, are of different occupancies, so we can make two buildings, we can uh, imagine an imaginary line in between and uh, from that, we can see the uh, fire separation distance uh, as in occupancy one, it is D1 uh, for occupancy one. And for occupancy two, it is a different fire separation distance, it is D2. So the overall separation distance between these two occupancies are D1 and D2, D1 plus D2, a combined uh, 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 distance. So uh, this is how uh, the separation distance will be measured uh, for detached occupancies. And uh, for uh, buildings of different height, uh, the, the separation distance uh, will also be different and uh, it will be uh, determined by the height of the building then. Here, I think one point uh, should be mentioned. Uh, there are two terminologies. One is separation distance and the other is one is setback. So they may be same or they may be different. The setback requirement may be different. The separation distance may be different sometimes, but most of the times they are same. However, if that happens, that the setback and the separation distance are not same, then the separation distance will govern. So uh, that is uh, what uh, required for a detached occupancy. So now let us go to the classification of buildings uh, based on types of construction. Um, as you can see that uh, there are construction group, construction type, and the description. Uh, two construction groups are there. One is non-combustible, group one. The other is combustible, group two. The names are self-explanatory. So we can uh, understand that group one contains uh, construction with materials which are non-combustible, and group two contains construction with materials which are combustible. So, uh, Group one is subdivided in five construction type. Type 1A is four hour protected, 1B is three hour protected, 1C two hour, 1D one hour, and 1E is unprotected. But it is also made of non-combustible construction. In group two, type 2A is heavy timber construction, 2B is protected wood joist construction, 2C is unprotected wood joist construction, 2D is protected wooden frame construction, 2E is unprotected wood frame construction. So uh, one of the applicabilities, there will be much more, but one of the main applicabilities of these two types of uh, um, classification is while issuing a development, development permit by the authority, say in our case, maybe Rajuk or CDA or KD or RDA, uh, they shall clearly mention both 
the permitted occupancy and the construction type not the permitted occupancy only or the construction type only a, a development permit must contain both uh, the classifications in accordance to table 3.11 and 3.12 so what happens to any any building which is already uh, in uh, uh, use and uh, sometimes it happens that we we want to change the use so the rule says that there is uh, we need permission to do that because without prior permission from the authorities no change shall be made in the number one type of occupancy or use of any building that would place it in a different occupancy group and number two in a different subdivision or same uh, in the same occupancy group so say for example we have a uh, house um, um, for essential uh, category say for a one category and and we uh, have decided to rent it out for uh, for some uh, commercial purpose uh, we can't do that so uh, we cannot uh, change type of occupancy at, at the same time even we cannot convert it into a hostel or dormitory um, because uh, it will uh, send it into a different uh, subdivision of the same occupancy group that is also not allowed without the prior permission of the authority uh, we are almost at the end of this session uh, just a quick uh, go through uh, of certain terminologies because uh, these terminologies will be uh, will be coming again and again in our presentation and we need to have a clear idea about these terminologies uh, to understand this occupancy based classification and the construction based classification so there will be one uh, is barrier a barrier is a wall or a partition or a floor slab or a ceiling within a building which confines and protects flow of smoke and fire from the exposed side of the, of the barrier. The fire rating of barriers shall be complied with the provisions of this code. Then comes the control area. This is also related to the barrier. Uh, control area is a space or a room within a building enclosed by barriers with the fire rated walls, floor and ceiling, where the quantity of hazardous material shall not exceed the maximum allowable quantity per control area for storing, displaying, handling, dispensing, and using as per provisions of this code. Then comes fire separation distance, a minimum distance which is to be maintained between potential sources and or between structures for fire safety. In case of difference between building setback and the required minimum fire separation distance measurement, the higher value shall be implied. So I, I was wrong in, uh, in uh, actually mentioning that the fire separation distance will be uh, the um, uh, determinant. Actually, uh, it says that the higher value shall be implied, either setback or the fire separation distance, which one is higher. Okay, so there is a ratio under here first. Uh, mixed occupancy. Mixed occupancy is uh, when two or more occupancies are amalgamated in a building shall be termed as mixed occupancy. Non-separated space condition. Walls and partitions between compartments, rooms, spaces and areas within a building or part of a building which are not separated by an approved fire rated barrier, walls or partitions shall be designated as non-separated use space condition or effective undivided single space. Separated occupancy. A building or a portion thereof separated by barriers with wall or ceiling slab that into two or more parts to accommodate different types of occupancies in different parts. Separated space condition rooms spaces or areas within a building when separated by approved barrier walls 
separation wall. This is a peripheral wall of a building or a building which shall be divided into two or more or a common wall between two buildings to control spreading of fire as per provision of this code. Structural frame, all members or elements such as columns, girders, beams, process, sprandles, which forms a frame and have direct connections with bearing and transferring as an integral and essential element for the stability of a building or structure as a whole. Unprotected, the element that shall have no prerequisites of fire protection rating. Combustible material, any material which burns and enhances the magnitude of fire. Party wall, a fire resistant rated wall where openings are protected, which is constructed from the ground level and continued up to at least one meter above the roof of a building to restrict the spread of a fire. So these are the relevant terminologies and as you can see that the whole thing is focused on uh, resisting the risk of fire and ensuring the uh, safety of uh, uh, life and the property. So. Uh, Maybe there are some repetition, but these are the important terminologies that we need to know. Uh, so tables and figures, uh, which are relevant to this presentation, this particular presentation today. Uh, we already have covered at least three tables. Uh, the first three, uh, one is about occupancy classification. The other one is about classification of buildings and type of, type of constructions. The third one is about the uh, fire resistance rating requirement for barrier walls and floor and ceiling assemblies. Uh, but there are other uh, relevant uh, tables uh, that will be uh, needed uh, and we'll discuss it on later, but these are the tables uh, we need to consult. Uh, uh, table 3.2.2 is about fire resisting rating of the exterior wall. Table 3.2.3 is about uh, the fire resistance rating of the opening protection assembly. Table 3.2.4 is about the permitted type of construction and fire zones of various occupancy group. Then there are two tables which deals with hazardous materials, exempted amount. Uh, and the finally, there is a table uh, 3.2.6 uh, it is an A to Z list of occupancy classification. So this is the end of the first segment. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, and we will have a recess for five minutes. So thank you. Uh, so let's start with our uh, second segment. Uh, occupancy classification. Um, in this segment, uh, uh, we have a, quite a number of changes than the previous building code had. Uh, the occupancy classification, there are a few new classifications added here, uh, some new subcategories and some new occupancies uh, will be distributed. So, uh, there are a few changes. So let's look at it. Uh, the main occupancies are, uh, right now there are um, 13 occupancies, uh, main occupancies, and they have individual subcategories, uh, sub-occupancies. Uh, residential educational institution for care, Healthcare, we have gone through it already. So I won't just repeat it. Uh, one thing is uh, stated here that every building or portion thereof and land use shall be classified according to the use of the character of its occupancy as a building uh, of occupancy A, A to M as defined below. So uh, 
while discussing them, we, we also need to uh, uh, know about certain uh, more aspects uh, uh, which are uh, stated in section 2.1.2, 2.1.3 and 2.1.4 of part 3, chapter 1 of BNBC. Uh, the first one says that utilities under occupancy L is incidental to operation in all other type of occupancy except occupancy J shall be considered as non-separated use of the main occupancy but shall be taken special safety measure as per, as per provision of this code. So L, although it is a separate occupancy, uh, individual occupancy, but it will be mostly considered as non-separated use uh, except in the occupancy J. Uh, but there might be special safety measures to uh, accommodate uh, it as a non-separated use. So 2.1.3 uh, says that uh, we have a table uh, called A to Z list, uh, table 3.2.6. It says that any occupancy or use type not mentioned specifically in table 3.2.6, A to Z list, or elsewhere in the code, shall be classified by the Board of Appeals under the occupancy group to which its use most closely resembles considering the life safety and fire hazard. So if uh, there is any uh, project uh, that doesn't fall into any categories that we can find in these occupancies, uh, we can refer it to this uh, Board of Apple and they will uh, assign a occupancy uh, for that particular project, uh, which will most closely resembles, but what will be the basis? The basis will be the considering uh, the life safety and fire hazard. Uh, on the basis of that, they will uh, decide the category of classification of that project. Uh, 2.1.4, each occupancy group shall be subdivided as detailed in the following sections. The detailed classification, including mixed occupancy provided in the 3.2.6, is non-exhaustive. So 3.2.6 doesn't cover all the occupancies. It might be, uh, there might be other occupancies uh, left out. Uh, so if there is, there is any use or character of occupancy in a building which is not mentioned here, it shall be classified as per the provisions of the earlier section 2.1.3. Now let us go to the details of each occupancies. So the residential occupancy, we start with that. Uh, this occupancy shall include any building or portion thereof providing sleeping and living accommodations to related or unrelated group of pupils with or without independent bathrooms, cooking and dining facilities, except any building classified under occupancy C or D. This occupancy shall be subdivided as follows. So uh, as we can uh, see this para, uh, uh, the sentence structure is made in a manner where uh, we first uh, tell about the infrastructure uh, uh, that is to be, uh, uh, that we are talking about. Uh, it is a building or portion of building. Then we are talking about the use of the building uh, for sleeping or living. Uh, then we are talking about the user group, uh, what are they, uh, so uh, are they related or unrelated. Uh, then we are also talking about the infrastructure facilities and um, we are also talking about the exclusion which will not be excluded in this category. And that is all. So this sentence structure will be repetitively uh, carried through the code because uh, it will be a bit uh, repetitive and I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds boring, but uh, this is the structure of, the, of this part and this classification. So we will be uh, seeing this sentence formation uh, 
again and again and probably this is good for us to uh, understand it in in this subcategories so that we can look for special details uh, for each category so uh, we start with a1 single family dwelling there shall include this shall include any building row type or semi detached or detached from neighboring buildings by distances required by the code and having independent access to the plot which is used as private dwelling by members of a single family a2 two family dwelling this this shall include any building row type or semi detached or detached from neighboring buildings by distance required by the code and having shared or independent access for two families and having facilities for living cooking and bathroom facilities independent of each other a3 flat or apartment this shall include any building or portion thereof which is provided for more than two families having facilities for living cooking and bathroom facilities independent of each other then comes a4 mess boarding house and dormitories and hostels this shall include any building or portion thereof in which sleeping living accommodations and bathrooms are provided for groups of related or unrelated persons with or without common dining facility dining facilities and with common cooking under single management control or with individual or group cooking facilities a5 hotels and lodging houses this shall include any building a portion thereof or group of buildings under single management in which sleeping living accommodation and bathroom facilities are provided with or without dining facilities but without cooking facilities for adult individuals is provided for hire on transient or permanent basis so uh, that concludes the a group uh, the residential group we start with the educational facilities occupancy b this occupancy uh, type of uh, type shall include any building or portion thereof in which education training and care are provided to children or adults this occupancy shall be subdivided as follows b1 educational facilities up to higher secondary level this shall include any building or portion thereof used for purpose involving assembly for instructions education and recreation for more than 6 persons on regular basis to fulfill the requirement of an academic curriculum approved by the government up to higher secondary level and which is not covered by occupancy i then b2 facilities for training and for above secondary level this shall include any building or portion thereof used for purpose involving assembly for instruction education training and recreation for more than 6 persons and which is not covered by the occupancy i and b1 b3 is for preschool facilities this shall include any building or portion thereof used for purpose involving care recreation and education for children more than six in number who have not yet reached the age to attend the school then comes the institution for care occupancy c buildings classified under this under this occupancy shall include those used for purpose of institutional care of the occupants such as detention for correctional or penal purposes medical or nursing care for persons suffering from illness or infirmity due to mental condition or accommodation of children or minor where the personal liberty of the inmate is restricted these buildings shall ordinarily provide accommodation for sleeping dining and other provisions approved by the authority for the occupants this occupancy shall be subdivided as follows 
So institution for care of children, C1. This shall include any building or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management used as an institution for the full-time care of children or minor, each providing accommodation for sleeping, dining, and other provisions approved by the authority for more than six children. C2 is custodial institution for physically capable adults. This shall include any building or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management used for purpose of full-time care and custody of adult or mentally disabled persons, but physically capable of responding to emergency. Now, uh, I, I, I would like to uh, uh, add a few words uh, to this situation because uh, we can see that uh, all the classifications uh, or occupancies uh, have their descriptions, but the underlying tone is about uh, whether the occupants can respond to emergency, especially in, uh, in uh, institutional category, uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, you can see that there are people who are infirm, uh, who cannot move without assistance, uh, there are children who cannot be, uh, um, uh, who are, who are uh, on custody of some other uh, uh, members, uh, adult members of the society. So in case of an emergency, uh, they probably won't know how to respond to the emergency. So these are all custodial uh, institutions or care institutions where the occupancy is decided in a manner uh, that uh, where the people will be independently uh, able to respond to an emergency or not. So uh, uh, let's go to the third uh, segment of it, C3, custodial institution for incapable adults. This shall include any building or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management used for purpose of full-time care and custody of person persons physically or mentally incapable of responding to emergency. C4 is penal and mental institution for children. So this shall include any building or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management used for housing children under restraint or who are detained for penal and corrective purposes in which personal liberty of the inmates is restricted. C5 is penal and mental institution for adults. So this shall include many any buildings or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management used for housing persons under restraint or who are detained for penal and corrective purposes in which personal liberty of the inmate is restricted. Now comes occupancy D healthcare facilities. Buildings under this occupancy group shall have shall include those used for purposes of providing medical care, diagnostic facilities, and treatment to persons suffering from physical discomfort, in which sleeping accommodation may or may not be provided. This occupancy shall be subdivided into, fo into as follows. D1 is normal medical facilities. This shall include buildings or portion thereof or group of buildings under single management in which essential medical facilities having surgery, emergency and casualty treatment facilities, general or specialized medical and other treatment are provided to persons suffering from physical discomfort. So it is about uh, treating the physical, the persons with physical discomfort. Uh, these are all general medical facilities. Uh, the D2 category, emergency medical facilities, uh, it describes that this shall include any building or portion thereof used for purposes of providing essential medical services, having surgery, emergency, casualty treatment facilities, general or specialized medical or other treatment is provided to persons suffering from physical discomfort. Up to this point, it, it resembles like D1, 
but there are uh, some exceptions that made it a different subcategory. This type shall be equipped and designated to handle post-disaster emergency. By construction, it is required to remain operational during and after disaster, built as a part of disaster preparedness program. So D2 is a special facility which needs to be uh, uh, operational uh, in post-disaster situation uh, or it will be part of disaster preparedness program. So uh, occupancy E uh, is for business. Uh, this shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for business transaction other than mercantile. This occupancy shall be subdivided as follows, office E1, this shall include any building or part thereof which is used for paperwork, documentation, only display of samples of products but not for direct sale, maintaining accounts and records for administrative or consulting services, banking or activities for business purposes and professional training. So that is category E1. Category E2 is uh, about research and testing laboratories. This shall include any building or portion thereof which is used as research establishment and or test laboratories involving hazardous materials within the limit of exempted quantity permitted in this code. The third one is E3 essential services. This shall include any building or portion thereof used for purposes of providing emergency services and utilities which are required to remain op operational during and after a disaster or other emergency situations. So these are essential services, a different category, uh, newly introduced. Uh, it was not part of the earlier BNBC. Uh, so we'll go to the uh, mercantile uh, occupancy, it is F. Um, this occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof uh, or group of buildings which is used for display uh, and sale of ma merchandises. Uh, this occupancy shall be subdivided as follows. Uh, small shops and markets, F1. This shall include any building or portion thereof which with an uh, area divided or undivided, not exceeding 300 square meter, used for purpose of displaying and sales of merchandise, either wholesale or retail, with or without incidental storage and service facilities. Large shops and markets, F2 category. This shall include any building or portion thereof with an area divided or undivided, more than 300 square meter, used for purpose of display and sale of merchandise, either wholesale or retail, with or without incidental storage and service facilities. The third one is refueling station, F3. This shall include any building or portion thereof used for providing refueling and maintenance without repair services for automobiles, which is moderately hazardous in nature. So we are uh, getting into uh, difficult uh, occupancies, not, not in a sense that it is something different from other occupancies, but in a sense that which requires much more protection and care uh, in terms of fire safety and other safeties. So here we start with occupancy G, industrial building. Buildings under this occupancy shall be subdivided on the basis of hazard potential of the contents and the process of the industry. So uh, it is the uh, hazard potential of the contents of an industry or the process of an industry that uh, is, um, that determines this category or subcategory. The hazard shall generally mean the relative danger of the start of fire and the rapidity of its spread, the danger of smoke and gases generated from uh, generated that pose a potential threat to the safety of the occupants of the building. Unless areas with different degree of hazard are effectively segregated and separated in accordance with the provisions of this code, 
the most hazardous area in a building shall govern its classification. So uh, there is an indication how it can be made safe. Uh, we, we need to uh, separate and segregate uh, hazardous areas uh, uh, and, and, and in that way we can make the building safe. Uh, otherwise, the most hazardous uh, area of the building shall govern its classification. This occupancy shall also include facilities for public utility services at the producer or distributor's end and deals with generation and distribution of utility facilities. Any such building or portion thereof which is not using hazardous material quantified and categorized in occupancy group J shall be subdivided, subdivided as follows. Low hazard industry G1. This shall include any industrial building in which contents are of such low combustibility and the process conducted therein are of such low hazardous nature that danger of self-ignition and self-propagation of fire is non-existent. The only danger being an onset of fire from external sources with the resulting danger to life or property, life and property. So uh, it is a relatively safer low hazard industry. Uh, G2 is about moderate hazard, moderate hazard industry. This shall include any industrial building in which contents are moderately combustible and the industrial process conducted therein are liable to give rise to a fire which, is, which will spread this moderate rapidity giving of considerable smoke. So it has moderate hazard. Then uh, comes the occupancy group H, storage buildings. Buildings under this occupancy group shall include any building or portion thereof used primarily for storage or sheltering of goods, wares, merchandises, vehicles, or animals. Any such building or portion thereof which is not used for storing hazardous material quantified and categorized in occupancy group J shall be subdivided as follows. So occupancy uh, group uh, H comes into two uh, categories. One is low fire risk, categ low fire risk storage category H1. The other is moderate fire risk storage category H2. H1 is uh, is the category where this shall include any building or proportion of uh, or portion of uh, portion thereof which is used for storage of materials or other contents which do not continue the danger constitute the danger of self-ignition and in the event of fire the rate of burning shall be less than moderate rapidity so uh, we will have more details in the fire segment, uh, fire chapter part four, uh, about what is uh, low fire rapidity or moderate fire rapidity or high fire rapidity. Uh, that will be discussed on the later uh, uh, presentations. Uh, but uh, for the time being, uh, the low fire risk storage uh, occupancy says that it, it has um, contents or storages of materials uh, that has uh, um, less moderate rapidity of fire. So moderate fire risk, um, less than moderate fire rapid, uh, moderate rapidity of fire. So it is not moderate, it is less than moderate uh, rapidity. So uh, for moderate fire risk storage, uh, it is uh, the building of, uh, it is describing uh, that they shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for storage or materials which do not cons constitute the danger of self-ignition but which is, which in the event of fire will burn with moderate rapidity. Items which shall be deemed to render a building hazardous shall speci are specified in section 2.14.3 along with exempted amount for each item. So uh, we have new references 
about section 2.14.3 and the new terminology that an exempted item is there. So uh, uh, there are two tables containing a list of exempted items, uh, table 3.2.5A and 3.2.5B, uh, which uh, deals with exempted amount of hazardous material. Uh, the basic idea of this table is about uh, uh, stating a limit of storage. As you can see in the fourth column, uh, there is a storage limit. The storage can be of two types. It can be a closed system storage or it can be an open system storage. So closed system storage and open system storage uh, are uh, two um, um, systems. Uh, if it is remain open, the uh, storage uh, safety margin uh, is compromised and so the storage quantity reduced uh, considerably. But if you can compartmentalize it and use a closed system, you can increase the storage limit. So that is the basic idea of this chart uh, or table. Uh, and there are different types of materials uh, which are flammable, combustible, um, uh, combination of uh, flammable, flammable gases, liquid, flammable, combustible fibers, and, uh, and there are many others. So for each, uh, there is a class or state uh, describing it into its uh, class. Actually, it, it is uh, more about its uh, fire spread capacity. And um, that determines the storage limit. Uh, so if, uh, if we can use control area, uh, for um, the storage of uh, these elements uh, accordingly, according to this chart, we can we can uh, create a safer environment uh, for hazardous materials. So this is the continuation of the same chart. There are um, oxidizing gases, pyrophoric material detonable, uh, there are explosive materials. So uh, the chart covers uh, all sort of hazardous materials. There are uh, some other types of hazardous materials um, that can pose threat to your health hazard. Uh, so here, uh, the same thing is here. Uh, they can be corrosive, highly toxic or toxic. Uh, so in a single storage situation, a closed system can accommodate uh, up to this uh, quantity uh, safely. Uh, the open system uh, can uh, be different here. So uh, that, that uh, determines the basic um, uh, guidelines of occupancy H, the hazardous occupancy. So we will go for assembly uh, occupancy, occupancy I. Uh, building under this occupancy group shall include any building or portion thereof in which groups of people congregate or assemble for reaction, for recreation, amusement, social, religious, political, cultural, travel, and similar purposes. This occupancy shall be subdivided as follows. Large assembly with fixed seats, I1. This occupancy shall include a building or a portion thereof for assembly in a space provided with fixed seats for 1,000 or more persons. Assembly buildings under this subdivision may be for theatrical, operatic performance or cinema projection having or not a raised stage, proscenium curtain, scenery loft, or projection screen, lighting equipment, projection booth, and necessary theatrical and mechanical equipment. Small assembly with fixed seats, I2. This occupancy type shall include 
any building or portion thereof primarily meant for use as described for building under occupancy two, but with fixed seats for less than thousand persons in a space. These assembly buildings may or may not be provided with a legitimate technical stage, theatrical stage, or related accessories or equipment. So the I3, large assembly without fixed seats, this occupancy type uh, shall include any building or portion thereof for assembly in a space in which there are no fixed seats, which may or may not be provided with a legitimate stage or theatrical accessories, and which has accommodation for 300 or more persons. I4, small assembly without fixed seats, this occupancy shall include any building or portion thereof primarily intended for use as described in occupancy I3, but with accommodation for less than 300 persons in a space. I5, sports facilities. This occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof meant for assembly of spectators for recreational and amusement purpose, mainly related to sports. So we start the new category, occupancy J, hazardous building. Any building or portion thereof used as storage, industrial, research, and other facilities dealing with hazardous material in excess of exempted quantity defined in table 3.2.5 or any microbiological facilities shall be categorized in, in this occupancy group. So the same industry or storage building or research and other facilities can be categorized in a different category if they uh, uh, have, if they deal with the hazardous material within the exempted quantity uh, uh, in, a, in a different category. But if they have excess of exempted quantity with them, then they will be considered as hazardous buildings. Definition of hazardous, hazard and the amount of such material which shall be deemed to render building hazardous are set forth in section 2.14.3. This occupancy shall subdivide as follows. Explosion hazard building, J1. This shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for storage handling, processing, or manufacturing of, of explosive materials and products that have explosion hazard. Chemical hazard building, J2. This shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for storage handling, processing or manufacture of materials and products that are highly corrosive, toxic, poisonous, and physically harmful including corrosive and toxic alkalis, acid and other liquids or chemicals producing flame, fumes, radiation, and explosive, poisonous, irritant or corrosive gases. Biological hazard building, J3. This shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for storage, handling, processing, and manufacturing of materials and products that use biological processes and in which the risk of harmful biological threat to the occupants exist. J4, radiation hazard building. This shall include any building or portion thereof which is used for storage, handling, processing, or manufacture of materials and products that use nuclear and radioactive processes and in which the risk of radioactive contamination exists. Occupancy K, garage. These occupancy types shall include any building or portion thereof used one or more vehicles having containers of flammable liquid or compressed gas or carrying power or combination of any of these as a supply source of self-propelling are kept for use, sell, 
rental purpose, storage, repair, exhibition, and all those floors of a building or portion thereof in which such vehicles are not separated by suitable cutoffs to prevent fire spreading. Parking garage K1. This occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof used solely for parking motor vehicles for a limited period of time. Private garage K2. This occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof used as store for owners or tenants motor vehicles for private use for unlimited period of time. Repair garage and showrooms. This occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof wherein repair of electrical or mechanical system or denting or painting works of body is performed on any type of vehicles and include associated floor spaces used as office, showrooms, incidental store and car parking. Occupancy L, utility. This occupancy type shall include any building or portion thereof used to install any type of equipment to provide support services. To any building or portion thereof or group of buildings of all occupancy groups and with special provisions for occupancy group J. This shall also include all public and private utility facilities of the consumer's end that are located within the consumer site and all installations are required special care to ensure life and property safety as per provisions of this code. Occupancy definition uh, for miscellaneous. This is the last category we have. Uh, buildings under this occupancy shall be, uh, shall include special uh, buildings not covered in other occupancy groups. These occupancies shall be as follows. Special structure, M1. Any building or structure which is neither listed in the A to Z list nor covered in any occupancy group provided by in this code, but unique in character may be categorized in this group by the Board of Appeals. Each and every individual M1 structure shall be complied with NFPA or equivalent standard for the life and fire safety. M2, fences, tanks and towers. This shall include fences and boundaries wall, boundary walls over 1.5 meter high, standalone structures for gravity water tank and towers for telecommunication, power distribution, air traffic control terminal or observation towers. So, this is the main description of the occupancy classification of for each occupancies and uh, at the end of the uh, of this session we we will visit uh, a list of occupancy classification it is table 3.2.6 located at chapter 2 of part 3 at the end of this chapter we can get uh, table 3.2.6 uh, let's have a look to that table. So here is table 3.2.6, uh, A to Z list. Uh, as you can, if you can uh, go through it, you, you can see that it is, there are alpha, alphabetical orders of uh, different uses. Uh, at the right end is the occupancy class or subclass uh, and there is a brief description in between. So it is uh, a large content where many occupancies are covered. Uh, our day-to-day -day uses uh, mostly are covered here but there might be some occupancies which are left out so uh, they either they are uh, they have clear indication uh, in the main occupancy group and if not uh, then it must be uh, referred to board of appeals and they can 
tell us about uh, what occupancy they should be. So this is quite a long list uh, containing uh, many occupancy classifications and their categories or subcategories. So uh, um, So that is the end of this segment um, and then we'll come back five minutes later again and uh, taking a five minute recess. Thank you. Okay, we can start again. Thank you. Uh, So, uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, let's start with segment three. Okay. Uh, so, segment three is about classification of building construction types based on fire restrictions. Uh, it is mostly uh, uh, covered in chapter three of part three in BNBC. Uh, uh, 2020, uh, but it also is uh, very largely covered in part four as well. So uh, actually all the occupancies are covered, uh, all the classifications are covered in both part three and part four very well. So today uh, our scope limits uh, to, uh, uh, limits our discussion to part three only. Uh, that's why we won't uh, go to the details of part four. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe the, uh, there will be a later presentation by Professor Helali on part four uh, that will clarify uh, a few things better. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, classification of building uh, on the basis of types of construction. We have already gone through it. Uh, so we know that there are combustible and non-combustible types and each have five sub-construction type. Uh, so uh, the code states that no building or portion thereof shall be designated a given construction type unless it fully conforms to the minimum requirement for that construction type. So this term fully conforms is very important. It cannot conform partially. So any any construction type must be, uh, uh, any building must have the same construction type uh, to conform it to the code all along. So <clears throat> when a type of construction is utilized, which is superior than the type of construction required by this code, say for an example, uh, if the code asks for a type 2A construction uh, and maybe there is a previous development which already has a type 2A construction, but the new construction uh, is intended to be done in type 1A construction, uh, it is like this case. When a type of construction is utilized, which is superior than the type of construction required by this code, there shall be no requirement to upgrade the rest of the construction to comply to that higher type of construction. And the designated construction type shall be that of a lesser classification, unless all of the requirement of the higher classification are met. So although we are using a higher classification construction here, partly, but it will uh, be credited to the lower classification construction because uh, of the presence of that segment in the construction. So, uh, but it covers the requirement because the code requires maybe a type two construction. So that's fine with, uh, uh, with the authority, they can approve it. 
they can always approve the higher type of construction, but uh, cannot accredite for that uh, unless the whole uh, structure is converted into a higher type construction. So uh, the fire resistance ratings of various types of construction for structural and non-structural members are specified in table 3.3.1a and b. We will go through these tables. For hazardous occupancies involving an exceptionally high, high degree of fire risk or an exceptionally high concentration of combustible or flammable content, the authority may increase the requirement of table 3.3.1a. Buildings having a height of more than 33 meter shall be constructed with non-combustible materials. The fire resistance ratings of various building components shall conform to ASTM standards. So uh, these are basic introductory information on, on this uh, construction classification. Now uh, we are coming to the definitions. Uh, what is non-combustible construction? Building or portion thereof in non-combustible construction group one are those in which walls, exit ways, shafts, structural members, floors and roofs are constructed of non-combustible material and assemblies having fire resistance rating specified in table 3.3.1a. The non-combustible group consists of construction type 1a, 1b, 1c, 1d, and 1e. So construction type 1a, this construction type includes buildings in which the bearing walls and other major structural elements are generally of four hour fire rating, fire resistance rating. Accordingly, type 1b is for three hour fire resisting rate, resistance rating. Type 1C is for two hour fire resistance rating. Type 1D is for one hour fire resistance rating. And type 1E is no fire resistance rating. So type 1E is a type uh, that uh, includes building in which bearing walls and other major structural elements generally have no fire resistance rating. Our group two, where combustible construction is there, buildings are portion thereof in combustible construction group two are those in which walls, exit ways, shafts, structural members, floors and roofs are constructed wholly or partly of combustible materials, having fire resistance ratings specified in table 3.3.1b. The non-combustible group consists of construction type 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, and 2E. Construction type 2A. This construction type includes heavy timber construction in which fire resistance is attained by A, limiting the minimum size of wood structural members and the minimum thickness and composition of wood floors and roofs. So the size of wooden members used in the structure and the floor and roof uh, is of importance here and there is a specified uh, dimension for them uh, to ensure the safety. Uh, B is avoiding concealed spaces under floors and roofs or by providing fire stopping protection for these spaces. So that is uh, another uh, um, measure uh, to, uh, for, for further safety, fire safety, fire protection. C is using fastening construction details and adhesive for structural members as required by chapter, by this chapter and part four. D is the minimum dimension for framing members shall be prescribed in this chapter and part four, except that members are protected to provide a fire resistance rating of at least one hour need not comply with this requirement. So this is uh, 
the construction type 2A or 2B construction type. This construction type includes buildings and portion thereof in which exterior walls, firewalls, exit ways, and shaft enclosures are of non-combustible materials having the required fire resistance ratings. And the floors, roofs, and interior framing are wholly or partly of wood of smaller dimensions than required for type two construction and are of other combustible or non-combustible materials having the required fire resistance rating. So construction type 2C, <clears throat> this construction type includes buildings and portion thereof in which exterior walls, firewalls, exit ways, and shaft enclosures are of non-combustible material having the required fire resistance rating. B, the floors, roofs, and interior framing are wholly or partly of wood of smaller dimension than required for type 2A construction and are of other combustible or non-combustible materials having no required fire resistance rating. So uh, as you can see from these three uh, construction types that uh, two features are more important. One is the uh, how the walls are constructed and the floors and roofs are constructed and they can be partially protected or not. So uh, that determines the classification type. Construction type 2D. This construction type includes buildings and portion thereof in which exterior walls, bearing walls, floors, roofs, and interior framings are generally of wood or other combustible materials, having the required fire resistance ratings. So uh, these are uh, uh, for uh, construction types, the final one, uh, type 2E, uh, this type of construction of buildings, uh, this type includes buildings and proportion thereof and portion thereof in which the exterior walls are generally of wood or other combustible materials having the required fire resistance ratings and in which bearing walls floors, roofs, and interior framings are of wood or other combustible materials, generally having no fire resistance ratings. So this is the last construction type, 2E. Now about construction separation. This separation uh, uh, also will include occupancy, not only construction. When two or more occupancies Accommodate, accommodated in a building, each such occupancy shall be separated according to the provisions specified in section 2.3, chapter 2, part 3, table 3.2.1. We have already gone through it, that step uh, chart or table uh, separated by, fire, by hours. Um, uh, so the second para says that when two or more types of construction used in the, used within a building, the entire building shall be subject to most restrictive construction type and shall comply with fire restrictions as per provision of this code. However, if the occupancies within the different types of constructions are completely separated by construction, that means the fire resistance rating requirement of fire separation listed in table 3.2.1 of part three, chapter one, then each occupancy so separated may for the purpose of this code be considered a separated building section. We have already covered it in, in our first segment of uh, discussion, but this is a reminder of the separation of constructions. So for separation of construction elements and fire rating, we have table 3.3.1A and table 3.3.1B. 1A is for non-combustible uh, group, construction group one. Uh, as you can see that there are, uh, at the first column, there is fire separation distance of the exterior wall. Then comes the construction element of the exterior wall. And uh, then for different types of construction, 
uh, it is rating in hours and the status of uh, exterior opening on the exterior wall. So uh, this uh, table 3.3.1a, uh, we, we, we are not going into the detail of each of the uh, components. It is uh, for, for any given uh, situation, we can at least see certain uh, aspects like uh, if we have better setback or separation distance, uh, we can have an effect on fire rating uh, or fire separation rating and also on the exterior openings uh, decision. So uh, for, for lesser uh, separation, uh, we have higher fire rating and uh, not, no permission for exterior opening, but for better setback and separations, we, we have uh, opening criteria uh, suited to this course uh, as per provision of this course uh, code and they, and uh, relatively relaxed. Um, fire rating. Uh, so this is, uh, a, this is the first uh, table uh, uh, describing in detail the each component of our construction, uh, the walls and the roofs and the floors uh, and shafts and party walls or fire exits uh, and their fire rating and they are opening where necessary. Uh, and, and there are uh, three uh, situations uh, uh, which is determined, uh, which determines uh, which part will be made with non-combustible material uh, and which are not permitted and which, are, which has no limit. So the shade has a meaning here in this table this part will be non-combustible. The white part may be combustible, uh, uh, made with combustible situations. So this is uh, uh, the first chart. The second chart, table 3.3.1b, is about fire rating of construction group two. It is combustible uh, uh, materials. Uh, the same structure is followed here. Uh, the left one is about uh, the fire separation um, uh, distance and then the construction element of the exterior wall and later there are floors and roofs specification for floors and roofs and there are other segments uh, of the structure like access corridor fire separation uh, wall and party wall shafts uh, and recommendation for th those things. So <clears throat> one important thing about uh, these two charts, or two, uh, two tables, is that there is a very uh, long uh, footnote uh, for each of the uh, chart, for both charts actually, uh, at the end of the charts. Uh, the footnote uh, contains uh, uh, detailed uh, variations and exceptions for individual groups. Um, we, if we can uh, go through the charts, we can see that uh, in a situation, uh, say for uh, this uh, particular uh, area, there is a uh, symbol uh, I uh, above one, uh, which is clarified in these footnotes. So it says that materials which are not, com not non-combustible as defined in this code may be used in non bearing construction element as per provision of the code. So each um, uh, supercrypt here um, has a, uh, has an explanation uh, underneath and 
so that we can go through these uh, explanations and uh, can get a idea of uh, each of the um, requirement, detailed requirement of for each occupancy group. So um, that's the end of this segment. Um, thank you. Uh, and I think uh, it's time for the question and answer session. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, stopping my screen share. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, but how can I uh, follow the question and questions here? Uh, in the screen share mode, I can't see the questions here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm stopping here. Okay. Yeah, I can see the questions. So um, the first question uh, asked by Umme Fatima, uh, it was, what do you mean by fire index? Uh, I think it was explained in the first table uh, where uh, it stated that occupancies with same fire index can be mixed. Uh, and uh, occupancies with different fire index may not be mixed or needed separate arrangements, uh, separated use or uh, separate arrangements for uh, coexist coexistence. So actually, fire index is a is a uh, fire related requirement that says which occupancies can mix with other occupancy and which needs extra precaution or may not mix. So this is one, C1 and C3, same fire index. Um, C1 and C3, yes, they are same fire index. Uh, what do you mean by separated and non-separated use? Well, uh, non-separated uses are those which can be, um, uh, which can accompany the main occupancy group without taking special provisions, uh, special uh, structural or uh, fire provisions. But separated uh, uh, uses are are situations where two occupancies or multiple occupancies are separated by. Uh, requirements um, of um, fire resistance materials and constructions. So they, they have to be separated, uh, separate type of constructions. They can be within a building or they can be separated by distance. Um, the next question is, uh, what is the distance for separated occupancies? Well, uh, the, uh, it, it is uh, defined in part three. Uh, there are separation distances for each of the occupancies, uh, but we haven't covered it here. 
uh, it varies from occupancies to occupancies. Um, actually, uh, it uh, it varies not only from occupancies, it also varies according to the building typologies. As you can see that uh, there were uh, options for row houses, semi-detached houses, detached houses. So there are situations where the separation distance uh, is not there. Buildings are sharing their walls with the neighbors. So when that kind of situation appears, then the rules of party wall applies. Fire barriers comes in. So uh, it, it, it varies uh, from situation to situation. So um, there is no any fixed distance uh, uh, to separate occupancies. What value should we use to determine fire separation distance? Probably it is the same question uh, asked before. So I think I have answered it. Uh, please explain again, <clears throat> party wall. Okay. So let's go back to my presentation. Uh, A party wall is a fire resistance rated wall where openings are protected, which is constructed from the ground level and continued up to at least one meter above the roof level of a building to restrict the spread of fire. So party wall is, uh, is a wall uh, at the property line actually, uh, adjoining two buildings. Uh, it is a fire rated uh, wall uh, and where openings are protected. So it is constructed from the ground level and it will at the top it will go one meter above the roof line to protect uh, the spread of fire. Uh, so that is what a party wall is. Um, please provide us the material for this lecture. Uh, I think it will be provided. Uh, okay, okay. 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 Um, how the fire index is classified, why it is necessary for the roof of a industrial single storage shed to be fire rated. Well, I think this uh, is an, a question better asked in the uh, part four chapter uh, where they single-handedly deal with fire issues. Uh, the basic idea of fire index is, uh, in this part at least, is about uh, two things. One is about creating, creating zones in the city. Uh, it is a kind of um, planning guideline that high risk um, building components cannot be located in, a, in anywhere in the city. So this uh, fire index, the idea of fire index is introduced so that the zones can be separated uh, for hazardous buildings. We can, we can locate a separate zone and it can be, uh, uh, they can all group together there. So, uh, that is one thing. The other thing is also that, that uh, we can understand that this particular uh, occupancy classification has a relatively higher risk of fire than the other one. So if we mix two occupancies, what can, what uh, precautions we should take? 
Uh, so that is the basic idea of fire index. Uh, so uh, there is a question um, uh, probably uh, uh, asked by engineer Mohammad Mustahid Azad. Maximum factory buildings fall in construction category type 1B, which requires slab thickness 6.2 inch for three hours fire rating, but structurally is overestimated even for a big panel. Is it not uh, increasing project cost, 2.5 hours fire rating instead of three hours, not enough? <clears throat> Actually, uh, the code has already decided on it uh, uh, we have the necessary uh, safety requirement for each category. Uh, so that is abiding here, abiding, uh, we must abide by. Uh, so uh, we'll burn with moderate rapidity means, okay. Uh, I think uh, I can just clarify the idea, but the detail will come into the um, um, fire uh, or part four lectures. Uh, the idea of uh, fire uh, spread uh, is that that if a fire generate at some point, uh, how quickly it spreads outward or in the surrounding. So if it, there are, there are materials that helps to spread rapidly, uh, very rapidly or moderate, moderately rapidly or very slowly, uh, the same fire can, can spread in a very fast manner and occupy the whole floor or depending upon the material, it may be isolated and uh, uh, may not spread. So the whole idea of this moderate rapidity or, uh, or less than moderate rapidity is about that fire spread uh, reduction, uh, fire spread control actually. So that is what is meant by moderate rapidity. Um, why there is a difference between occupancy of assembly with or without fixed seats? Well, um, uh, actually think about two situations. One is, a, uh, is an auditorium or a cinema hall where we have fixed seats and say uh, 500 persons. Uh, accommodating in the same hall and think of a say mosque uh, where we don't have any fixed seats. It is an open floor uh, with same amount of persons. In case of fire, which one will be safer uh, or easier to evacuate from? So um, uh, the whole classification is also about safety of people uh, and uh, therefore the uh, criteria of fixed seats and without fixed seats uh, actually comes in. <laughs> um, the question here is refueling station could be in the group of hazardous building occupancy J, J. I think refueling station should be in group J1 explosive in nature or J2 material composition being explosive in nature, why refueling station is categorized in F3? Please explain. Okay. Actually, uh, refueling stations uh, uh, also need a permission from our Vishforokodhi um, doctor, uh, and um, the uh, the the code here uh, uh, categorizes it as F3. Uh, depending upon the quantity of 
uh, exempted quantity uh, of the material as guided by the uh, other authorities. It is not only the uh, um, um, the, the code specifies the exempted quantity. If it is within this limit, it will be definitely in this category. And if it is not, uh, as per guideline of the code, if it is, if it complies with the quantity, it will be F3. If it's not, then it will go to the hazardous uh, category, of course. You are right that it, it can also be uh, categorized as hazardous building. If a building has a occupancy such that condition one, 300 people congregate in one area on second floor and the upper floors are residential. Condition two, 300 people congregate in one area on roof and the lower stories are residential. What should the rational to select an occupancy category for the building under those two conditions? Actually, when 300 people congregate in a building, uh, it is uh, um, think, I think it is an assembly. So it is already a mixed use building. And if it is a mixed use building and an essential, uh, if it is a uh, uh, assembly uh, category I building, and category A residential building in, in uh, combined in a same facility. So uh, it will need fire separations and adequate separations for as per uh, recommendation of this code. Uh, I don't know whether I have, uh, if I am clear or not on this question, but uh, it seems that there are two types of occupancies you are trying to mix. One is residential, the other is assembly. So um, they will be considered as mixed occupancy uh, with separation, of course, uh, or separate occupancies. Why bearing walls have more rating than non-bearing walls? Well, uh, bearing walls, are the main elements that transfer the loads of the building of the structure and it is uh, uh, it is uh, needed for safety of the property and the occupants uh, that the bearing wall lasts long in an emergency situation in a fire situation so bearing walls uh, need to be rated more than non-bearing walls Non-bearing walls uh, can be partition walls with uh, other materials, but bearing walls need to be uh, uh, a well-rated uh, material which resists fire for much longer time. Uh, does any special consideration for fire rating designing steel structure? Well, I think uh, your question will be answered in part four discussion. Uh, better answered will uh, will be better answered there. Uh, we we don't we are not going through this detail here. Uh, so uh, from now on, it is necessary to mention that fire rating of buildings on drawings, element wise. Okay, it is up to the uh, authority. Uh, uh, because they will indicate uh, the um, development permit. Uh, they, will, uh, they will ask for a particular type of construction uh, and a particular occupancy uh, for a particular project. Uh, it, is, it is up to their format what they will require or not. But it is on the professionals uh, uh, responsibility, and it was as always, as, as always that um, <clears throat> we abide by the code, uh, and uh, and we 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 draw and specify and construct buildings uh, according to the code. So if we if we want to 
make some construction uh, on a site from a drawing board, probably we need to specify uh, um, material um, specifications, probably where pirating is also a, one of the elements um, in the, in the uh, drawing board. So I think it is somewhere it will be uh, directly or indirectly included. What is the importance of occupancy category in seismic of structure? Well, uh, uh, it, the construction uh, uh, classification is more related uh, to the fire and seismic situation, uh, definitely. But occupancy has a very indirect uh, connection in a sense that uh, when a building is uh, occupied by many occupants uh, in, in seismic situation, uh, what will be the emergency evacuation procedure uh, and like other safety measures uh, will be considered in those occupancy categories. What is the guideline for steel structure, both low rise and high rise? Actually, we are uh, not discussing material uh, in detail in this presentation. Uh, why building code separate A1 and A2? Is there any separate provision in BNBC? Uh, well, uh, this uh, is a common typology, uh, quite uh, uh, common, uh, quite commonly found in Bangladesh, where uh, there are single family houses, there are two family houses, and there are multi-family houses. So for, for smaller construction in, in many uh, rural or uh, semi-urban areas, we have, uh, a2 typologies, which were now subdivided into a new category. Uh, and uh, probably uh, with the provision of uh, row type or semi detached type construction, it will help to increase uh, densities if necessary in the long run. So what steps should be taken, should be needed when the structure is defined as it not occupancy, the occupancy category as per BNBC. Uh, I'm not very clear about this question. What step should be needed when the structure is defined as it not occupancy, the occupancy category as per BNBC. Um, I'm not very sure about it, what it means. Um, if fulfill the all code, project cost will be high. Therefore, what is way of cost minimize? <laughs> uh, the code, building code deals with the safety of life and property. So it is uh, uh, up to the authority, the, the owner of the project, the professionals, that they make a safe and uh, habitable structure uh, within a reasonable cost, of course. I think uh, we have a different occupancy, uh, uh, different uh, construction uh, group inclusion in this part where uh, combustible materials are also included, where relatively uh, lower cost buildings can be done. Uh, but then again, cost cannot be the determinant <coughs> of uh, our safety. So safety first. What about boiler, boiler separation wall? 
is it must be done by 10 inch RCC wall or 10 inch brick wall can be provided. Well, uh, you have to go through the code for that uh, uh, particular information because there is no prescription here. Uh, for for any uh, component that has a explosion risk or fire risk, it has to be separated. And it, ca it has to be separated either by distance or by barrier wall. So the distance, how much it will be, or the barrier wall, what the material or thickness of, or it will be, uh, has to be checked from the code. And, <clears throat> or it might be both, both distance and uh, barrier wall. So uh, this session is about a general understanding of uh, the occupancy and the construction classification. We, we are actually don't going to the, we are not going to the detail of materials and, um, but the idea, uh, I think you have, you are clear already that there is a need for separation. So uh, the specification will say uh, that how much separation is needed here. Uh, is boiler can be set on the floor above ground floor. That is first floor above for a three-storied utility building. If boiler has a uh, hazard of explosion, uh, then it falls into a hazardous category. Uh, and like any other hazardous category, it needs separation. Uh, I think you, you uh, better consult the code, but the general understanding of it says that any explosion hazard component must be separated by distance from the main occupancy. So these are the questions. Uh, thank you all. From from Abdul Rahim, you can you can you can rephrase you can rephrase. Yep. Well, <clears throat> there are two more questions. One is about mixed occupancy, non-separated use. Uh, I think I have explained it uh, again, but um, yeah, C1 and C3, same fire index. Yes, they are. Uh, well, Well, uh, let me let me answer the question of C1 and C3 first. Well, uh, here uh, it is said that C1 is institution for care of children and C3 is custodial institution for incapable adults. And they are of same fire index, they are fire index uh, one. Yeah, uh, but uh, I, I don't understand exactly that uh, the purpose of this question because there are other categories or subcategories in the same uh, fire index. Uh, C1 and C3, uh, if the question is that if they can be mixed or not, uh, the code has different provisions in different tables and, uh, and general guidelines about uh, when we will go, go to the detailed descriptions of each occupancy we'll see that there are general and specific guidelines about each of the occupancy classifications. Uh, that will determine uh, if uh, the, 
if uh, they can be mixed or not. So uh, I think if you are asking about the uh, whether they can be mixed or not, uh, the that will uh, need further investigation. But basically, the information we have given there is a table uh, that determine the separation hours between them uh, describes if they can be uh, used together or not. Okay, uh, there is a question. My query is why code separate A1 and A2 in BNBC? In full BNBC, there are no separate provisions for A1 and A2, I think according to the occupancy category. Okay. Um, I think this is done in, in, in uh, uh, in terms of uh, encouraging uh, a, a relatively higher density situation uh, or moderate density situation in our context. Um, they, they have uh, more or less uh, uh, all, all occupancies uh, of A1, A2, A3, A4, A categories have many similar uh, similarities. A1, A2 are similar, of course, but they have some uh, differences as well. Uh, if you go through the code, you can find it. Uh, why since there is inability issue? Uh, actually, I don't understand. Uh, if it is, when, if you are uh, indicating about disability or something, uh, well, there is a separate uh, uh, segment in part three, which deals with differently able people. So it is there. Uh, we are just not covering it today. What steps needs to be taken when it is observed that the structure is not made with maintaining occupancy category as per BNBC? Well, it is up to the enforcing authority uh, they will take necessary measure. First of all, uh, uh, it is illegal. So they will take legal measures, of course. Uh, is there any height limitation for construction I, 1A and 1B, IA and IB? Well, we'll detail, uh, we'll discuss in detail in the in tomorrow's presentation about the height and other limitations. Uh, for for high-rise construction, uh, we have mentioned that uh, it has to be at least uh, 1B category construction. Uh, so 1A also is uh, there. Uh, both can be done. Uh, but the code uh, in this part, at least in part three, it doesn't specify separate height limitations. Uh, we have to investigate in part four if there is any uh, bindings for that or not. Thank you. <laughs>